G'day guys, how's it going? This is Broadcasting Because, and today I thought, since the Buddy Franklin trade up to Sydney is fast becoming one of the biggest stories of the year, and one of the biggest trade stories we've heard in quite a long time, I thought I'd throw my two cents around as to how I think Buddy Franklin signing with the Sydney Swans for nine seasons, nine years, he's 26, 27 in January as it is, and that is an absolutely enormous, enormous deal, and an enormous move in and of itself, but nine years, truth. So guys, what I thought I'd do with the aid of AFL Live is I'd run down how I reckon the Swans are going to be lining up in Season 2014 with Buddy in the side and how that's going to affect the Swans, how that's going to change the way they play. Righto, so we'll start at the fullback line, and this is how I reckon the Sydney Swans will line up from the backs in Season 2014. We start off looking at Dane Rampey, whose place originally in the side is thanks to, or not thanks to, but because of an injury to Alex Johnson in the preseason that ruled him out for the whole year, and injuries to other key, key defenders like Ree Shaw and LRT, uh, has really cemented his place in the side. He's worked really hard. His work rate off the ball is just as good as it is on it, and I reckon for a first-year player to almost put himself into a grand final is a very, very good effort for in just one game short, and I reckon he'll be a regular feature in season 2014, and hopefully for the Swans, for many years to come. Next up, Ted Richards in the fullback spot. One of the best fullbacks in the competition, without a doubt. Probably second, I think, to Brian Lake. Uh, Teddy Richards is a star. He's been great for the last couple of years. He'll be up there again in the Swans Best and Ferris this year. Didn't quite have the year that he had when we won the Premiership in 2012, but I'm sure he'll be featuring again very, very regularly in season 2014. And next up, we have Heath Grunny, the Swans' homegrown uh, back pocket. Started off a lot in the centre half back earlier this year uh, when Malcheski really hit form he moved out to the wide half back half back flank um, and I reckon he will end up settling in the back pocket next year just because uh, we don't really know how fit Alex Johnson is going to be Shorey is probably going to miss the first couple of rounds of next year as well I was thinking for a while they may move Sam Reid to the back line just because his contested marking is so good and his goal kicking has been a bit here and there since he joined the Swans, but it looks more and more likely like he's going to move on since we signed Buddy, so unfortunately I couldn't find a place anyway for him in this team. Next up we move to the half-back line and it's a familiar face, it's a cult hero around the Sydney Swans, Lewis Roberts Thompson who's come back from injury and I'm certain he'll make a start next year, probably in the half-back flanks, we'll see where he moves around, I'm sure he'll spend a lot more time up forward, but considering the tall timber we'll have up there now with Buddy Frank signing. It's tough to see where he'll fit in, but I'm sure they'll find a place for him. He's a great player. Next up, we have Nick Malcheski, probably the best defender the Swans had this year. Uh, Dane Rampey had a good year. Teddy Richards was a little bit off on last year, and Malcheski really stepped up. He'll be up there again in the Swans' best and fairest. He's a great player, a great, great centre-half back, uh, and he's one of the main reasons that our slingshot worked so well in our Premiership year. And he did it very well again in 2013. He is a sure thing to be there next year as well. Next up, we have the captain of the Sydney Swans. Jared McVeigh stepped in at the beginning of the year. We had so many defenders go down with injuries and we were really lacking depth in the back line. Someone had to step up and that man was Jared McVeigh. He played arguably his best year for the Sydney Swans in season 2013. He won himself an All-Australian for the first time, playing off the half-back flank, and that position as well, I reckon, is one that he'll settle into for probably the remainder of his career. His service from the back line is absolutely amazing, and his efforts to get the slingshot going with Jetta on the wing, I know that's a bit of a spoiler, but with guys like Jetta and Rowan sprinting up the win, if he can get the ball into their hands regularly, I reckon they'll be looking very, very good for season 2014 and onwards. Next, we move into the midfield, and this is where the Swans fans will start to get a bit of a sense of salivating for thinking about things happening in season 2014. Lewis Jetta, hopefully he'll be fit. He played a couple of games towards the end of 2013. They'll make sure that he is 100% fit, so hopefully he can have the same sort of impact on the wing that he did in season 2012. Next up, we have Daniel Hanabry. I reckon he'll be the meat in the sandwich between the two wings. His ball skills are amazing. He showed that all the way throughout this year. Although he didn't quite have the end of the season that he did at the start, he polled extremely well in the Brownlow. Ended up with about 21 votes, I think. 20, 21 votes. Uh, an absolutely fantastic effort such a young guy as well. He'll mature, he'll develop to be one of the great centers in the competition. He's already up there at such a young age. He'll continue to develop, continue to grow, and continue to be an essential part of the Sydney Swans lineup in 2014. And next, 
Oh, I love this kid. Gary Rowan. He had such a shocking 2012. Missed out on the Premiership year because of a broken ankle he suffered in the opening minutes of a game against North Melbourne earlier in that year. Missed nine-tenths of 2013. Came back and played a couple of games. Kicked some exhilarating goals. The energy this kid brings to the competition and to the Swan side is just unmatched. He's so fiery. He's a redhead. He's full of gusto. And I absolutely love watching him play. Uh, the roar when he came back onto the, the SCG for the first time was... Oh, it was unbelievable, like we just won the grand final again. So it will be great to see Gary Rowan have a big impact on the Swans, uh, and I reckon Gary Rowan will step up and slot in very, very nicely. So this is the part, as a Swans fan, I've been waiting for. This is the part I'm sure many, many Swans fans have been waiting for. We get to the forward line and see how the Sydney Swans are going to line up from the half forward line in season 2014. Adam Goods, the premiership star, the hero of the Sydney Swans, basically won us a grand final with half a leg. He was an absolute star in that game. Didn't quite have the same year in 2013 just because of his injuries. And it is such a shame to see a star of the game out with injury for as long as he was. He'll be back fit and firing in season 2013. He'll be blazing all guns. He'll be 33, 34 years of age throughout the season. But I tell you what, he keeps getting better with age. Just like Jude Bolton, just like all these guys seem to do. Um, champions of the game do. They just keep getting better with age. There's no drop-off in Goodsy's quality, and we will see the best of Adam Goods next year. There is no doubt about that. Lance Buddy Franklin, the Sydney Swans 23. He's got to take 23, surely. I can't see him taking anything else, to be perfectly honest. Buddy Franklin settling in at the centre-half forward line. I'm going to run through, after I go through the lineup, how I reckon his impact will really be on the Swans, what role he'll play, what he'll do with Mumford now leaving the GWS, and all those sort of things as well. It's amazing that the Swans have been able to to, to grab Franklin, and he may have used GWS as a, scro a, a smoke screen, may have been sitting on this for 12 months. I guess only he will, will really know, or I don't know, maybe Mike Sheen will get on him or something, but I tell you what, the, it's just such an amazing signing, and this is why the Swans will be a very good chance in season 2014. We'll run through what his role will be exactly in just a moment. So next we move on to one of my personal favourite players in the Sydney Swans, that's Ryan O'Keefe. I reckon he'll move back to the half forward line for season 2014. He played a fair bit as a midfielder this year uh, and last year as well, but he has played most of his footy in the half forward line and I reckon he'll slot in very, very nicely on either side of Buddy Franklin. So next we move on to the forward line. I reckon Luke Parker and Ben McGlynn will settle in in the forward pockets. Parker particularly uh, because now with the retirement of Jude Bolton, who played a lot more as a forward pocket in his career, or towards the end of his career, I should say, um, particularly in season 2013. And then with the retirement of Mitch Morton as well, I reckon Parker will slot in. He showed in the finals he can kick goals, and I reckon that that's just a little vacancy uh, that the Swans won't have a lot of trouble filling. Parker's very chirpy on the ball. His ball skills are great, and I reckon he'll slot in very, very nicely on one side of Tippett, and on the other side, I reckon, will be Ben McGlynn. He's shown he's great in the, full forward, oh, in the forward pocket, I should say. Hopefully he stays injury-free for 2014. He's a great player, and hopefully he can be part of the Swans' premiership charge in 2014. Obviously, the meat in the sandwich between the two, Kurt Tippett, star from Adelaide. Uh, we got him last year, and I will be talking through everything to do with Kurt Tippett because he is a very, very big part of what is going to be changing in the Sydney Swans. Along with this man, Mike Pike now takes a number one ruck role in the Sydney Swans with Shane Mumford. Uh, the news coming through today that he will be going off to GWS. He's basically signed the contract. It'll be official when the trade period starts. Uh, but Mummy is now a giant. So that means that the second highest contested mark getter in the competition for 2013, Mike Pike, will get his first stint as the number one ruckman for the Sydney Swans. He started a lot of games in the ruck uh, throughout season 2013 and did quite a bit in 2012 as well. He had to play just about the entire 2012 grand final as the number one ruckman. And he was, that is still probably the single best game Mike Pike has ever played. He was best on ground at half time and he's continuing to get better. Next up, we have Joey Kennedy in the midfield. Mr. Consistent, you know what you're going to get from him in just about every single game. Another great year for Joey Kennedy. Wasn't as explosive as he was in 2012, but had a great consistent year. Still racking up disposals and still being a very, very influential part of the Swans midfield and the followers setup. And he'll be there again in 2014. There is no doubt. Along with this man, Kieran Jack. What more do you want me to say about Kieran Jack? Him and Hanbury are in a very similar mould, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of switching around between them in the centres, but I could see Kieran really settling in as that hard nut, like the Jude Bolton sort of type, to throw himself at the pack, to rack up the tackles and to get that burst of speed out of any congestion. So Kieran Jack, I reckon, will settle in in the Rovers spot. We move on to the bench just very quickly in the interchange bench now. 
this is very up in the air because I'm not sure how the Swans will um, draft. And I'm not sure how they'll trade. I'm not sure how they'll introduce the new rookies like Dean Towers and guys like that, Tim Membry. But this is the bench I've gone with just for now anyway. So Tommy Mitchell, he had an um, absolutely amazing year. He was up there in Rising Star. And I reckon this kid is a gun of the future, potentially a Brownlow medalist of the future as well. I love watching Tommy Mitchell play. He's an absolute gun. Nick Smith is very, very underrated as well. I really like Nick Smith. He's a fantastic tagger. Uh, probably second or third in the competition to Ryan Crowley, who I really, really rate. Um, and I think Nick Smith will, again, have a very important role in the Swans in 2014. Craig Bird and Alex Johnson, we don't know where they're going to fit in in the Swans' plans. I like Craig Bird, and he's a, a good utility to play wherever you need him. Alex Johnson, we don't know how fit he's going to be. Um, so I've left that sub relatively open to bring in someone like a Dean Towers or a Tim Membry. Um, or a Tony Armstrong or someone like that. I still don't know what's going on with Sam Reid, but I would like to see uh, Josh Reshaw as well. Um, he could slot in as the sub. But I've kept Alex Johnson there just because we're not 100% sure how his injury is going, and they'll probably introduce him in some way from the bench or as a sub. So there you go, guys. That is how I think the Sydney Swans will line up in Season 2014 with that massive, massive inclusion of Lance Franklin to the forward line. If you want to see my rundown of how I think Buddy will fit into the side and how the Swans will work around with their tools in Season 2014, you can click this link here on the screen, which will take you to my second video where I discuss exactly that, how it'll work with all the tools, and how Buddy's role will change from Hawthorne when he starts with the Swans. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Be sure to mash that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more. It's like giving me a virtual high five. And everyone loves high fives. Be sure to leave a comment as well on how you think the Swans will line up in season 2014. What this changes would you make? Who do you think will stay and go? Thanks very much for watching guys. Cheers and stay tuned.